Hi, this is Tony Phillips with Phillips Fishworks, and this video is all about microfauna. So I get questions every day uh, via email or YouTube comments uh, all about this topic, the microscopic world that lives in your aquarium. It's quite mysterious, uh, mostly because a lot of it you can't see, and even the larger creatures you can see, if you've got fish in the tank, a lot of times they're hiding. So let's just dive straight in with talking about what what does that word even mean, microfauna. It might be foreign to some of you. Uh, I'm sure you've heard it before. You've heard words like microorganism or microscopic creatures. Well, microfauna simply means, uh, well, micro is tiny and fauna is animal. So it's the microscopic animals living in your aquarium. All right, let's jump straight into the question. So a common question I get all the time, what do you feed microfauna or the, your microfauna tank? Or what should you put into the aquarium that will help uh, grow and propagate all these little microscopic creatures? Well, they're kind of already eating things in there. Uh, they will be breaking down the leaf litter. They will be eating any kind of dead plants, decomposing things. They are going to chew up the fish waste, chew up uh, waste from scuds. They're also going to be eating on uh, eating on each other uh, on some level but if you're wanting to encourage growth or if you have a microfauna uh, specific tank you could put things uh, fruits and veggies uh, even kind of rotten fruit and fruits and veggies a uh, little fish food um, things of that nature now a lot of times you don't have to directly feed them because again if you're feeding your fish you're basically feeding them already but um, uh, it doesn't hurt to put a little bit in every now and again uh, and I can't stress enough a little bit. So let's say you've got your little 10 gallon microfauna tank. You're going to want to put a little, uh, maybe a quarter inch slice of cucumber in there every now and again. So it's easy, especially if it's a new tank or jar or aquarium. If you put in a big giant piece of cucumber, that's going to be way too much fuel and it's going to create a huge bacteria bloom, which will um, usually cloud up the water uh, and that's not so much the issue that the water's cloudy, except it's going to be a huge bloom of bacteria, which could deplete the oxygen, which uh, could create kind of that cascade effect of everything dying. Uh, that's like the, the, uh, the real bad end result. Um, now, if you do overfeed and you, it starts to cloud up and you feel like it's about to foul, just take the food out. Uh, make sure you got a little aeration in there. It'll be totally fine. You probably don't even really need to change the water you could if it was a uh, kind of hit that catastrophic mark but again it's not about feeding a whole lot it's about just providing a little bit of that nutrients to get that cycle started they don't need a lot uh, a little bit goes a long long way um, i like to use uh, pieces of banana peel a uh, little slice of zucchini or cucumber or strawberry something of that nature a little sprinkle of fish food every now and again if there's already food in there and it's not gone they don't need more so you definitely don't want to overfeed um and same thing with uh scuds and uh creatures like that now a lot of times when i'm talking about microfauna i kind of group scuds into them um, scuds are not technically microfauna they would be macrofauna so there are sizes or actual measurements that classify the scientific labels and explanations to these things are not as important as knowing that mother nature is already operating these creatures already exist they're already breeding you don't have to know you know their classification for them to exist you don't have to know the the number you know how large you know what size of creature is microfauna versus macrofauna that's not actually important to you or your aquarium you know successful operation uh, this view is kind of just simple it's just i want to keep it as simple as possible because it doesn't need to be complicated so many times we are slapping labels on things and you know well stress the importance of knowing the names but really that that's not that important especially to get started so what do you feed them? Fruits, veggies, that type of thing. A little bit of fish food here and there. Don't overfeed. You don't need to feed a lot. That's just putting extra nutrients into the water, which can give you other problems. Um, excessive algae growth, which again, isn't really an issue. Uh, but the more nutrition you have in the water, 
uh, you can create a fouled situation pretty quickly, especially if it's a new aquarium that doesn't have an established population of microorganisms to consume all of that nutrition. So um, another common question I've gotten more than once would be, is it okay if I have a filter in the aquarium? So a lot of people, if they've got a hang on back filter or uh, some kind of power filter or a canister filter, they're afraid that these creatures all get blended up and, and they won't be able to hide and survive uh, or if there's too much flow. Um, that's not the case at all. Uh, these creatures will get into, uh, they find hiding places first of all, but many of them can go, even like adult scuds can go through a filter uh, if they can fit anyways, uh, but they can go through a filter unharmed. Many of these creatures can pass through that little propeller and they don't get blended up into a million bits. So um, having a filter in your aquarium to me is irrelevant. In fact, uh, different creatures will colonize every part of your aquarium, including the filter media. So uh, if you do have scuds in your aquarium or you introduce scuds into your aquarium, uh, it's just a matter of time to where, you know, you'll find them. Uh, if you open your hang on back filter and you pull out the little sponge cartridge, there will be scuds crawling on it because they will get into every little crevice and find a way because that's great habitat for them. So um, filters are no issue at all. Uh, you know, th these creatures come from all over the place. They live in stagnant water. They live in fast flowing water. Um, another uh, great question, do microfauna just show up? Do I have to add them? Will it develop over time? That's a, a, you know, I get that all the time. If I have an aquarium, will all of a sudden one day I just notice these little creatures in there? And that's kind of a yes or no question because, you know, on some level there is bacteria and small microscopic organisms living in all aquariums, even if you think yours is spotless and clean. Now, the more habitat you have uh, and the more natural material you have in there, that will encourage bigger populations. And, um, you know, if you do add a microfauna culture, that will add the variety because what what doesn't happen is it does not come out of nowhere. Spontaneous generation is not a thing. So um, if you start off with, you know, a sterilized environment and you've got dry sand or dry gravel and everything going in is, you know, clean um, and you add water in your fish, yes, bacteria will get in there. Uh, there's airborne bacteria. There's the um, bacteria involved in the nitrogen cycle. All of that kind of will occur whether you add that or not. But you're not going to get scuds, you're not going to get copepods, detritus worms, all these other, the, the variety of uh, organisms, uh, macro and micro, they are going to only be in there if you add them or if they hitchhike somehow in. So, you know, you can uh, get some of these um, small creatures come in on plants, that's a, a great way. Um, taking a sponge filter out of an existing aquarium and putting them into uh, your new aquariums in a, another awesome way of introducing some of these creatures, um, taking some sand or some gravel out of an old tank, putting them into your new tank. That's a way to, you know, moving that material out of an established aquarium into your new aquarium will certainly add some of those creatures. Uh, uh, and you can, you can find that all over the place. Now, um, if you take sand out of, uh, the wild, or if you take sand out of, uh, if you take sand out of your friend's fish tank and you let it dry out, a lot of those creatures are going to die off. Um, now having said that, some of those creatures won't. So there are many types of these small organisms will actually be able to dry up and kind of go into like a suspended animation, or they'll have some kind of, uh, eggs that can completely dry out and stay dry. And then when rehydrated, they more or less come to life, so to speak. So lots of ways to introduce it, but it does have to be introduced somehow, some way, whether that's intentional or unintentional. Now, um, again, if you add a microfauna culture, which, uh, for example, like what we sell on our website, philipsfishworks.com, uh, our cultures, uh, like bag of bugs, scud balls, or the bag of leaves, those are botanicals and, that have been in our system for a period of time, and they're being colonized by different bacteria or different small creatures. And then when you, it's like a slice of our, you know, a slice of our system, you can take that and put that into your new aquarium. And that is a, uh, a nice kickstart that establishes, uh, you know, kind of a starter culture or starter population of 
a lot of these creatures so um, it does have to be added if especially if you're starting from you know like a sterile or dry situation um, but they will after you add it they will grow and develop over time those populations will grow you will uh, see an increase in those creatures um, absolutely and and I would encourage uh, if you're gonna have fish in your system uh, if you're starting a new tank, uh, let let those creatures grow in that population, uh, grow in there a little bit before you add the fish. Uh, don't have to, but you know it gives them a kind of a head start to get their numbers up before the fish start eating on them. So that kind of leads me into my next uh, topic. Another question I get is where did all where did the, where did it all go? Where did all my scuds go? Where did all um, you know? I, I had this aquarium. I introduced your microfauna package or I put some scuds in there and um, there were no fish and these creatures started growing and they were interesting to watch and I you know this tanks become super fascinating I love watching the copepods dart around and the little detritus worms and the populations were so huge and I put a fish in and like 20 minutes later everything's vanished well these creatures are smart they uh, know what to do when they start getting eaten and they hide so uh, if you don't have a fish in the aquarium and you've got a, a big population of scuds, it's nothing to see a dozen or two scuds at any given point swimming around or crawling around. Um, if you uh, add the fish, they're quickly going to catch on to the fact that they're being eaten and they're going to hide. So that's a common thing. It doesn't mean they're not there. Take the fish out and boom, all of a sudden they come back. So... Um, they're still there. Uh, if you've got enough habitat like leaf litter and rocks and things, you'll be able to see them in the cracks and crevices up against the glass. Uh, but I promise you, the fish are not, you know, they can't eat them all if you have the habitat to hide them. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up.